Hi, uh, so our next uh, machine learning problem is uh, we have given a customer's data and company wants to build a churn prediction model. The reason is that company is quite concerned and worried that you know some of their customers in the in the recent past have left them and moved to a competitor company. And they wanted to understand, you know, can we build some kind of a machine learning model which can predict like, you know, uh, in the coming months, how many customers will go into churn or maybe what is the probability that this given customer based on certain characteristics will go into churn, some kind of a score, maybe something which can say that, hey, you know, there is a 0.8 or 80% chance or 85% chance this customer might get churn in next coming months so that it can help the business partners or finance team or a sales team to take a timely action and save the customers save save the customers from getting churn because that is very important for a company because no company wants to lose their customers and as a matter of fact there is a there is a saying that you know uh, it, it's five to seven times costly to get a new customer as compared to retain the existing one so the objective is to build a model build a churn prediction model which can predict whether the customer will going to churn or not so now let's move on to the jupyter uh, jupyter notebook and let's build and create a model so now we are into the jupyter notebook i have already including all the relevant packages like numpy cborn um, pandas xgboost and so on and i have also a uh, 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 uploaded the data into the Jupyter notebook as well. So since the data has already been loaded, let's do some kind of uh, uh, descriptive statistics or data profiling or exploratory data analysis. So first, let's do a quick snapshot of the data, how the data looks like, what kind of a features we have, what kind of a target variable and so on. So we can see that this, this data has been aggregated at the customer level. So each row will give you the unique customer ID details about their age, gender, dependents, vintage is how long this customer was with, with the company. So for example, for customer one, the vintage is 3135 number of days. So this customer is with the company from last three more than 3000 days. Similarly, customer ID two is with the company from the last three, 310 days. And then it will tell me some of the some of the numerical columns, like some of the balance, every average balance, monthly balance, quarterly balance previous quarter balance and so on and and finally we have a target variable called churn so zero means uh, they are still with the company and one means that customer has been churn so it's, it's like a classification problem where you have a two classes zero and one zero means customer is with the company whereas one this customer has been churned out so this company has moved to a different company so now since we have already seen the snapshot of the data uh, let's do some kind of a profiling first let's see the shape of this data set and we can see we have uh, more than 28,000 rows and 21 columns and let's print some the name of the columns as well just to see uh, what kind of a columns we have as we know we have a customer id and each column which uniquely represent the customer id we have age gender dependents we have a previous month and balance average monthly balance previous month debit, previous month credit, current balance in the target variable and so on. Then next thing we can see uh, data types of each of the columns just to make sure that our column is in the right format. Uh, vintage, gender is in the object categorical, we expect male and female, dependence, occupation and churn is in the uh, integer which is 0 and 1 whereas some of the numerical columns are also in the proper format. So more or less, it seems that our from the high level, this the columns data type looks solid to me. So we can move on to the next step. Let's see if there is any kind of a null values or not in this data set. So we can check using the function like null dot sum and it will tell me for each of the column how many null values are there. And we can see that we have some columns with the null values. Like for example, gender, we have more than 500 null values. And similarly, dependence has more than 2400 null value, city has 800 and days since last transaction, we have more than 3000. So we have some null values and let's see how can we replace those null values. But before moving on to replacing the null values, uh, just see some more details, some more analysis, let's say the descriptive statistics of each of the columns. 
and we can see the descriptive statistics of how many total number of records are there mean value standard deviation minimum value median max value and so on and if you see let's say randomly pick like a current balance so current balance uh, mean value is around 7 uh, three seven hundred seven thousand and three hundred dollars whereas its median value is a uh, thirty two hundred dollars so there is a big gap between their uh, median value and the mean value so there is some kind of a skewedness in the current balance so we want to make sure we tackle this problem uh, when we build the model so we can quickly see some of other details as well although i'm not uh, spending too much time on it so we can move on to the next step let's see the distribution of our target variable how many uh, rows belongs to churn and how many rows are belongs to non churn so what we can do we have a churn column we can use dot value underscore counts and we can see that uh, it's quite it's, it's little unbalanced data set because the churn records what we have is around 5000 whereas zero is around uh, 23000 so it's like 80 percent are belong to uh, non-churn and 20 percent of the data belongs to the churn, cat chat churn category and now uh, let's start uh, you know uh, replacing some of the null values so we let's start with the gender so gender we have a null value so 525 uh, so what we can do, I am just simply replacing all the null values with their mode values. So what I'm doing is finding the, the gender. And we can see that we have a very high percentage of males. So let's replace all the, uh, the null values uh, with, the, with the male value. So dot replace np dot nan. And then we can replace with the mode value again i'm not saying this is the best way to replace the value but uh whatever in a, in a small amount of time what we are getting during the interview let's let's replace uh, this particular with the mode value in place equal to true and the value has been replaced and similarly we also have a null values in i guess in the dependence and the occupation and all these are uh, uh, all our categorical values so let's replace uh, similarly with the uh, uh, with the mode values again i am not saying that this is the best way to replace the mode uh, replace with the mode values but given the amount of time let's stick to the simple method of replacing through um, uh, through mode values and then dependence and the next one is occupation and let's replace with the occupation and we have replaced so we have another column called days since last transaction which also has a null value so let's replace it as well and i think we also have a city as well so let's replace city with a mode value and i am just simply replacing here city before we replace for the days since last transaction i just wanted to see some kind of a distribution for uh, for a uh, uh, date since last transaction because I saw in the during the our analysis that uh, there is some kind of a skewedness in the data so just before we can replace with uh, median value or mean value I want to see its di distribution and we can see that there are this this uh, column is like a right skewedness so we we have already seen there is a difference between the median value and the mean value and we can see that it's 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 it it has some kind of a skewedness so I will replace this variable with a median value instead of the median instead of the mean value let's replace with the median value and we will go with the same approach dot replace if there is any uh, none values then uh, replace the null values with a median value and i am skipping uh, uh, all the null values so that they should not be part when it's finding the median value and then in place equal to true And there is something wrong in the code. So this should be a small. And now it's done. And let's let's check if all the null values have been replaced. And now we can see it's been zero now. So it seems it's so so all the null values have been replaced. So it means now we don't have any null values in our data set. So now let's do quick uh, exploratory data analysis. Let's create some graph and see how our uh, data set looks like. 
so let's start first with let's say current balance because we have one of the column called current balance and during descriptive statistics we saw that there is some skewness in the data so let's plot it uh, current underscore balance and we can see that there is a, some skewness so let's replace and see if the distribution get better through log let's con transform into a log this log and see if the distribution gets better and we can see now it's more looking like a bell curve or a normal distribution so during our feature engineering step i will convert this particular uh, column current balance into a log and let me print some of the columns because i want to see the name of the columns for our analysis so now let's pick a previous month end balance and see its distribution how does it looks like and we can see again the distribution doesn't looking very good and let's convert this into a log form as well so let me run it here itself and when we convert the distribution looks much better it's much more centralized much more into a bell bell curve and similarly we can do for some other variables as well so i will not going i will not go all the attributes but i will show you some more as well let's do the log of log of uh, uh, other variable called let's say uh, average monthly balance previous quarter and see if it does it. it's still better again it's not very centralized in the log as well but it looks much much better let's look some credit and the debit uh, debit uh, variable so we have one current month credit so let's see how does it look and what i'm doing is i'm taking its log form itself because uh, i know that you know if you see its raw form you will see the distribution is very skewed so let's take a uh, its log form and we can see it's look it's look like a bimodal distribution so we can see that in our data set there are two set of two different type of a customers where one customer is lying between this particular uh, uh, peak or a valley and uh, we can see the other set of group is lying between like something like between 5 to 10 so probably this could be like more like a probably like a churn people somewhere maybe non churn here churn here so that would be very interesting when we build the model so this analysis is very interesting uh, 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 when we you know present our output to the business people we can say that hey you know we found that in our data set based on the credit variables we see some kind of a bimodal information or maybe a two different type of customers are there so now we have already did some kind of analysis now let's do a feature engineering so we saw that you know most of the our um, most of our numerical columns needs to be transformed into some kind of a logarithmic form so what i'm doing here i'm converting all the uh, attributes all the numerical attributes in some kind of a uh, logarithmic form so i'm not writing each and every column so i have already written so i'm just copying pasting here and i'm converting all the numerical columns into some kind of a log form and this plus 53202 i have added because there are some negative values in it so if you take the negative value of a log this might can give you an error just to avoid those kind of an error i am adding like plus 5000 plus 3200 and so on so i have run and i have converted all those numerical columns into some kind of a log form so uh, we have uh, we have seen some kind of a what we, what we call a uh, analysis for numerical columns let's do some kind of a analysis for uh, uh, categorical columns like uh, gender dependents and so on so let's create a plot for uh, dependents x equal to dependents and then i'm counting like you know how many uh, people are falling into different different Uh, dependents category so data is equal to df so we can put it in in the single quotes and we can see that lot of customers are falling into a zero dependents almost like probably around 96% of the customer have dependents only zero so another thing what we can do uh, we have not seen you know how numerical columns are behaving across two different classes or two different labels so what we can do let's do one example 
uh, of his plot where i want to see the vintage because probably i'm thinking that if the customer is long enough with a company let's say from last 5 years or 6 years might be his or her probability would be less moving to a different competitor as compared to somebody who has joined recently and have been in the company for the last 3 to 4 months maybe maybe that probability would be little higher so let's see on the vintage how how this vintage is behaving uh, when it comes to different uh, labels so we have a uh, target label as churn and we can see that zero is the one which is bluish and one is orange which is a short one and we can see now the if you see the plot here uh, the zero one are the bluish the long ones and the one are the orange and we see that trend looks kind of same for both the classes uh, it doesn't saying that you know uh, vintage uh, uh, has a good uh, explanation when it comes to churn equal to 0 or 1 but if you see the trend looks quite similar maybe the only difference is the count of people the count of people are very high when it comes to churn equal to 0 but when we see the trend the trend looks quite similar when it comes to uh, both the labels so that's okay i mean if we if we don't find a much useful thing Now let's print the column name as well because uh, I'm planning because we have some uh, categorical columns like gender, dependence, occupation. So what I'm doing is I'm converting them into a dummy variables. So let's create df dummies underscore underscore gender pd dot uh, get underscore dummies and then let's start with the gender and prefix I'm putting as let's say gender. And same thing we can create for dependence uh, as well, as well as for occupation. So let's do for occupation as well. And similarly, we can create dependence as well. So let me copy this guy, occupation, put it here and replace. And then similarly, we can do for dependent as well. So in this way, we can find the uh, what do you call the the dummies of gender, occupation, and dependence. And the other thing is that we can you know drop the the original ones, um, let's see, which is let's say gender, uh, occupation, and similarly we can drop the the dependence as well. And then x is equal to 1 in place equal to true. So in that way, we can uh, drop these guys. And what I'm doing is finally, I am concatenating all my um, dummy variables into the original data set. So df underscore df underscore dummies underscore gender. And then basically x is equal to 1. And then depend. So we can do in this way and then put it and make sure that you put x is equal to 1 here and in that way first it, it will create the dummies then drop the original variables and then uh, concatenating back into df and it has been done so let's quickly see the df.head. And then and finally, I'm dropping some more uh, columns, which I think is not required for this particular iteration. Uh, let's say customer, customer ID. I'm also dropping, let's say city, because for city, it's given some kind of a code. Uh, I'm dropping. So for this iteration, I'm not taking the city as well. Uh, I'm also dropping customer network category as well. And then I'm also dropping um, branch underscore code. Uh, let's do again df.head and we can see the variables. We have 36 columns and we have around 28,000 rows. So now I think data is ready. Now let's split the data set, uh, split the training, uh, split the data into 70% into 70% training and 30% validation. So 
split the data into 70% training and 30% validation. So let's create an X. So DF drop. So here basically I'm dropping the churn variable and this would be my independent variables you can see. And the next one is Y is equal to DF which basically will store up the the target variable which is churn and then finally i'm splitting validation underscore x and then train underscore y and then uh, validation underscore y and then i will use train underscore test underscore split passing x y uh, test size i'm taking as 30 percent so i'm passing 0 0.3 and then random state a random state is equal to uh, 100 so in that way this will uh, convert the the original data into 70 percent training and 30 percent validation and another, another thing is important to stratify equal to y so that your both training data and the validation has a, a proper proportion of your both the classes so this this has been done now let's build the model classifier equal to so i'm using the xgb uh, xg boost xgpu dot uh, xgp classifier now uh, let's pass max depth equal to 5 some of the hyper parameters uh, number of estimators is equal to 100 and then i'm passing let's say objective function is equal to uh, here i'm let's say pass multi uh, soft max and then i will pass the let's say num underscore a uh, class equal to and then finally i am putting as a classifier dot dot fit and then here i will pass my train underscore x train underscore y and then the our uh, evolution uh, how to uh, stopping criteria as well early underscore i am passing stopping criteria let's say equal to 50 and eval underscore set and let's pass this train underscore x and similarly we can pass uh, validation underscore x and validation underscore y and the metric to evaluate metric is equal to i am passing our uh, log log less log loss sorry so this has been done so let's uh, run this one and hopefully we should not get any error so there is an error so we got an error so we missed the equal to sign so let's run it and we can see from the training and the validation error if you focus this one and this one log loss so we can see that with every iteration our uh, training error and the uh, uh, validation error are dropping and we can see that validation uh, training error is 0.22 whereas validation error is 0.3.354 and if you see the training error and the validation error we can see a little bit of a difference uh, between their error probably there is a sign of a overfitting but let's do some further metric analysis and see if we see some kind of a problem. So, so now the next step is to uh, predict our uh, data or predict the output on the validation data. So let's create a variable called pred and the model what we have built classify dot predict and then pass validation underscore x. And this has been done. Now let's see how our metrics are coming along. So print metrics dot classification underscore report and let's pass the one which we have just calculated which is pred p r e d and then we will pass validation underscore y and we miss another one and we can see now the about the precision recall f score and the support and we can see that for zero class we have a f score of 0 0.92 and 0 0.561 
so we can see that for for churn class which is one we see that you know our metrics are little uh, off but obviously there is a lot of improvement uh, for uh, improving this model so the next thing what we can do just create a like a confusion metrics uh, between the two and see uh, how many have been misclassified or rightly classified so spread validation underscore y and we can see that for class 0 uh, we have around 846 have been uh, misclassified which has been supposed to be non churn but model has classified as as churn whereas when it comes to 1 732 has been rightly classified but the other 325 has been uh, wrongly classified as not churn and another thing what we can see is to find the uh, uh, feature importance as well so let's create a feature importance as well xgb dot plot underscore importance and pass our classifier which we have built and we can see uh, some of the top variables it's showing that the some of the top variables are current balance average monthly balance of previous quarter average monthly balance of previous quarter so q2 is previous to previous quarter and previous pre this one is uh, is a previous one then the vintage previous month balance current month debit and so on so we saw some of the feature importance so we can subset we can pick the top features and then recreate the model and see how the metrics are coming along so this would be a like a good end-to-end -end approach how you can you know explain your approach to uh, interviewer so make sure you include all the step you also justify why you have chose xg boost and uh, some of the analysis we done in the beginning you, you should mention that after this what would be your next step so next step would be to find the important features recreate the model and see how, how the model is uh, behaving thank you